Auto Line Daily is brought to you by Dow Automotive Systems, improving durability and increasing design flexibility with Betamate structural adhesives at DowBetamate.com. Here are today's top headlines. GM says it's going to turn a profit this year, but it also says there's no hope for saving Saab, and we'll give you some insight on how Ford is redesigning its interiors. Up next, we'll be back with the news behind the headlines. This is AutoLine Daily for Thursday, January 7, 2010, and now the news. In speaking to the media yesterday, GM Chairman Ed Whitaker predicted the company will return to profitability this year. Of course, he didn't attach any numbers to that prediction, nor did we learn if he's talking about an operating profit, a pre-tax profit, or the one that really counts in my book, a net profit. Even so, the profit announcement is a pleasant surprise and brings the U.S. government one step closer to getting back the $50 billion it poured into saving the automaker. Whitaker also said GM does not expect any deal to come through to save Saab. He says none of the buyers have been able to come up with the financing needed to restructure the company. You know, I think GM knew that several months ago that this was probably going to happen, but had to go through the motions that it was doing everything possible to save Saab. Tata is bringing the Nano to Detroit, but it won't be where you'd expect to find it. According to the AFP, Tata will unveil the Nano at a press conference at the Detroit Science Center, not Cobo Hall. Also, according to the Detroit Free Press, Tata's CEO, Ratan Tata, says the car could be on sale in the U.S. in three years, but it needs a more powerful engine and needs to meet more stringent safety standards before it hits U.S. showrooms. Ford had a great year in China last year with sales growing over 40% and it plans to continue that success this year. According to Reuters, Ford predicts the Chinese market will grow 8%, but obviously it plans to beat that number. Chinese vehicle exports in November grew for the first time in 15 months. According to Gasgoo.com, exports were up 13% overall, but only passenger cars saw exports grow. Vans and buses continued to decline. Many analysts believe Chinese automakers would be consumed by satisfying their domestic market, but this indicates Chinese vehicles could flood the global market sooner than expected. Ford is using the Consumer Electronics Show to reveal a new infotainment system. The latest version of Sync features an overhauled user interface called My Ford Touch, and it offers an array of upgrades too long to list here. But what the company was really going for is a common sense, easy to use interface to control all those functions. At the heart of the redesigned UI, that's user interface, are five-way buttons mounted on the steering wheel, which work just like an iPod. Ford found this is the easiest to use interface around. Center stack controls are all touch-based. The instrument cluster features customizable LCD screens, a la Fusion Hybrid, The company showed the system in what has to be the redesigned Edge and MKX. And interestingly, if you look at the Lincoln's interior, there are no buttons or knobs on the center stack. You control radio volume and fan speed by touch sliders. You just slide your finger across them. We'll have more on the My Ford Touch system in the coming days. And ahead of the Detroit Auto Show, Buick revealed its new Regal GS. Amazingly, it's focusing on performance. The reborn Regal features a turbo four-cylinder with an estimated 255 horsepower, which on its own is significant, but a six-speed manual transmission is also available. You heard me right, a six-speed stick. Even though it's just a rebadged Opel Insignia, Buick is calling the car a performance successor to its grand sport models of the past. Zero to 60 should take less than six seconds, and Buick needs to do the unexpected, but this is certainly not what anyone expected from Buick. Coming up next, it's time for your comments. And now it's time for You Said It. Every day you post all kinds of comments and questions and You Said It gives me a chance to respond. 
A number of you saw our report that Toyota wants to cut the cost of components it buys from suppliers and responded with dismay. Zeke, or Zeke, seems to have captured it best, writing in to say, Toyota wants parts cost cut 30%. Easiest way to do that is to use cheaper materials in the constructing, translating to shorter life. Bet I know what this means. We will be driving Toyotas that have planned obsolescence with their vehicles, just like GM cars are now. You know, Z, knowing Toyota, that is not how they're going to do it. The best way to take cost out of a car is to design it out. Check the AutoLine After Hours we did with Sandy Monroe, an expert in how to design things so it's easier to manufacture them. He explained one of the ways to quickly cut cost and boost quality is to design products so they don't need fasteners. And you folks definitely did not like hearing that the federal tax credit on biodiesel was allowed to elapse on January 1. Lex wrote in to say, the petroleum industry lobbyists must be loving this one. If Obama and Congress do not act quickly, we could see the failure of the entire biodiesel industry in a few short months or weeks. That'll mean the loss of countless American jobs. And Lex, I'm with you on this one. Biofuels could be this country's ticket to energy independence. And regarding the changes at Smart USA, Nick Stevens has this. Napoleon was 100 times smarter than Penske, but he blundered anyway by invading Russia. Even brilliant people make grievous mistakes, and Penske made his when he got smart for the USA long before he hired Lajak to bury it. Nick, I admire Roger Penske, but I have to admit I'm puzzled why he ever saw a future with smart. It was a failure in Europe, and I don't know why anyone thought it would do better here. And that is it for today's top news in the global automotive industry. Thanks for watching. We'll see you tomorrow.